Welcome, friends. Welcome to New Life in Jesus, brought to you by the Emmanuel Christian Broadcasting Network. It is a great joy and a privilege to share with you the Word of God at this time. And I do believe that as you are watching this program, the Lord will bless you and he, His mighty hand will be upon your life no matter what situation you face. Today I'd like to share with you about someone who's who asked God's mighty hand to be upon his life. Someone who's mentioned only once in the Bible. Someone who, who changed his circumstances and even though failures and setbacks came his way, he learned how to be an overcomer. The Bible says when you and I know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are called to be overcomers in the Lord, being an overcomer. Turn with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. My brother, my sister, here we read the life story of a man who changed his destiny. He changed every circumstance that he faced. He, he knew that the answer and the key through to every problem, to every failure, was in the hands of God. He humbled himself. He acknowledged God as being sovereign over his life. God as being the one who has total authority. And he came to the Lord in humility. The prayer of Jabez is something which is very familiar for many Christians. But some of you who are watching may not have heard it before. In fact, here in the, when you read the whole chapter of 1 Chronicles 4, you will find that the, 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 it's almost like a historical note within a genealogy. Now, a genealogy means they're writing about the family tree of, of various people who were born and who died. They were writing about fathers. They were writing about mothers. They were writing about children. And the Bible, in the midst of it all, suddenly it stops, almost as though this was something that the Lord wants us to know. He was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain, in pain. How many of you have been in pain? In case you haven't been in pain, Pinch yourself and you'll know what, for a moment what pain feels like. Pain is recorded as a distressing feeling caused by intense or damaging stimuli. That is the definition of pain. In medicine, pain is a symptom of an underlying condition. Little is known of Jabez other than that he was a descendant of Judah. Israel had gone into the promised land. Joshua had died, and now the, 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 the promised land was divided among the tribes, and Jabez was of the tribe of Judah. He was an honorable man, the Bible says, but you look at the stark contrast in verse 9. It starts by saying he was more honorable than his brothers, and then in spite of that, his mother called him sorrow. The word Jabez means sorrowful or sorrow maker. How is life treating you right now? Do you have pain? Do you have trials? Do you have situations where you feel overwhelmed and you do not know where to turn to? Do you have worries that can trap your life? Do you have, do you have things that is preventing you from believing God's promises? Jabez's mom could not look beyond the pain. But Jabez, the man of sorrow, asked God to keep him from the sorrow which his name 
men. My brother, my sister. There is a name that is the name about every other name. The name that every tongue will confess. The name before every knee will bow. The name before every spirit is subject to. That name is the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Jabez's mom could not look beyond the pain. Even though he was honorable, she could not look beyond the pain. For that moment, she gave, she decided about his future for that moment by naming him Sorrow. But he had a better idea. And today I want to tell you about this better way. The Bible says I have two ways for you. I have, there are two ways in life. You have eternal life and you have eternal death. And the Lord is admonishing you and, 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 and directing you and saying, choose life. Jabez was in a situation where sorrow was thrust upon him for no fault of your own. Do you find yourself to be like that? Do you find that your life has, feel, has been because of other circumstances? Do you find that things have been happening in your life that have been beyond your control? Perhaps you're worried about your children. Perhaps you're worried about your job. Perhaps you're worried about your finances. Whatever it is, there may be things beyond your control. But today I'm going to teach you from the Word of God, life's great secret, that God answers prayer. That God answers prayer. Especially when we make a prayer from our hearts. Especially when we choose to believe, even though we may not see at that opportune time. Even though when we, when we are doers, when we are called to be doers of the word and not just hearers, when you choose to believe, you shall see the glory of God. My brother, my sister, pains, trials, situations, worries, these are all common elements of life. If you don't have a trial, a person who has a trial today may not have one tomorrow. So life is full of ups and downs, trials and circumstances. Jabez's mom could not look beyond the pain. But he was the man of sorrow. He asked God to keep him from the sorrow which his name recollected. Now what is profound here is that he starts this prayer by saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. He recognized that there was something about receiving a blessing from God. The Bible says he who blesses us adds no sorrow to it. He turned and looked towards God and he said, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. The word, oh, he, he makes an exclamation, a cry from his heart. He cries out from his heart. From the depths of his heart, he cries out. My brother, my sister, whether it is sorrow or pain, God knows your heart's cry. Whether it is trial, whether it is a difficulty, whether it is a burden, whether it is a sickness in your life, God knows your heart's cry. You don't have to accept failure. You don't have to accept defeat as being the way of life. And that is what we can learn from Jabez. The prayer of Jabez eventually became greater than the name of Jabez. The prayer of Jabez, the prayer that he made became greater than his name. And today you have that opportunity. You who are watching have that opportunity to take the prayer to make the prayer of your heart. Call on the Lord Jesus, trusting in Him, putting your faith in Him. For the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Would you choose to believe? Would you choose to have a foolish faith in God? It may seem foolish to the world, but not to God, my brother, my sister. 
He acknowledged that God is the source of blessing. He knew the Abrahamic blessing which was in Genesis 22, 17 where it was, God told Abraham, in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply you, I will make your descendants countless as the stars. My brother, my sister, right in the middle of the genealogy in 1 Chronicles, the author takes a break to tell us about a man whose name meant pain. But he cried out to God to be changed. And God changed his life. He turned his pain into prayer and victory. His prayer recognized his powerlessness and a reliance on God. Do you rely on God today? For everything, the Bible says, I stretch, God stretches out his hand and out of his righteous right hand comes forth every good thing. Everything that you have in this world, every blessing that you have, everything that has been provided for you comes from Jehovah Jireh, our provider God. My brother, my sister, Jabez's prayer recognized his powerlessness. Many times that is the problem in our lives, in our struggles. We go running from one place to another when we are powerless. And Jabez was powerless, but he recognized his powerlessness. He set it before God. He told God, Lord, I am powerless. I have no way, I have no hope. Oh, that you would bless me. Oh, that you would touch me. Oh, that you would sanctify me. It was a prayer from his heart. Would you make that your prayer today? Who was Jabez? He was just an ordinary person like you or me, perhaps. There is no mention about him anywhere else in the scriptures. It does appear that he was the tribe of Judah. You look at his attitude. He was honorable. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Your attitude towards God will determine how high you go over the problem, my brother, my sister. He was honorable than his brothers, we are told. But it may have to do with the nature of his prayer. There are two characteristics needed for someone to be honorable in prayer. One of them is being earnest, which means intense, zealous, sincere before God, to be determined. We are told in James 5.16, the effective, per fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The second of these characteristics is humility. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. The earnest, fervent prayer. What is that about? It is prayed in true humility that is honorable before God. When you open your mouth to declare and to pray before the Lord, it is important that we are earnest, we are humble, we are fervent, we are, we are intense in our desire to serve God, to, to reach out to Him. And that is the heart's cry of Jabez when he said, Oh, that you would bless me. Oh, that you would bless me, Lord. Another attitude of Jabez's prayer is, is, is towards his directed, that he directed his prayer to God. Because we are to worship the Lord our God and serve him alone. Jesus taught us to address our prayers saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name in Matthew 4.10. To direct such a prayer to God shows that one is trusting him and is depending him on him for everything that he needs. My brother, my sister, Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication while thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Are you anxious today? Don't be, rejoice for your Savior Jesus Christ will make a way for you. 
He will make a way where there is no way. He will open doors where there are no doors. He opens the eyes of the blind. He opens the ears of the deaf. He touches the lame and they are healed. Cancers are healed. Diabetes is healed. Anything that has got a name is healed. When you trust Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Be anxious for nothing. Second, consider the character of Jabez's petition. He requested a personal blessing. Now to ask God's blessing is to ask him to bestow divine favor. There is nothing wrong with requesting God to bless us specifically. The psalmist did. He prayed, save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever in, in Psalm 28, 9. Jabez also asked God to enlarge his borders. This seems to relate to material prosperity. But enlarging borders is not just material things. It's not just physical territories. It is also about the spiritual plan of God. To enlarge my territory. To help me, Lord, to go beyond what I can see. I may not have faith for for tomorrow, but Lord, help me to have that faith. Enlarge my territory. Going beyond the set standards of my life. Going beyond the boundaries that the enemy has put before me. Enlarge my territory. He recognized that it is the king of kings who can enlarge territory. He, it is scriptural. He prayed a scriptural prayer. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, that we, when we serve him faithfully, he will provide for us. Jabez had the right motives. He acknowledged who God is. His heart was invested in the power of God. Enlarge my territory. He wanted to have his reach to all those around him. He saw, that he, he saw the tribes of Judah. He saw, he knew that he could go beyond his circumstances. He knew that if he trusts God and God made a way for him, he would break, break free. The sky would be the limit. Victory, prosperity, healing, deliverance, all that was there and is there in the hands of God today. When we are humble enough to acknowledge him, when we are humble enough to go before him, when we are humble, humble enough to fervently pray before God, he will answer our prayer. You see, the important thing that he did was that he used prayer. Prayer is one of the most powerful tools that you and I have as the children of God. There is not a day or a night or a time when prayer is not important. That is why the Bible says pray without ceasing. There is not a situation you face that you should not pray, my brother, my sister. When you pray, you must lift up others' concerns for those who you know need prayer. When you pray, you must pray with a penitent heart like Jabez prayed. Fervently, intensely, passionately. For it is not just prayer with our lips, but it is the matters of our heart. You cannot pray for others believing and knowing that God will bless them and not have the same faith that God will bless you. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. The hand of God. The hand of God, when the hand of God is upon us, my brother, my sister, when the hand of God was upon Job, the enemy could do nothing to him. The hand of God. Whose hand do you have on your life today? Whose hand do you have? Whose hand do you trust upon? The hand of God. The Bible says, Lord Jesus, our Savior, 
intercedes for us and is seated at the right hand of God. What a glorious connection to the hand of God. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth who intercedes for us is seated at the hand of God the Father. What a promise that is. Today, whatever problem you face, he is interceding for you. Whenever the enemy, the accuser of our brethren, the, 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 the demonic powers of this world, when they accuse you of your sins and say punishment, guilty, the blood of Jesus cries out, mercy, mercy, mercy. The blood of Jesus keeps on crying out. Do you know the blood has a voice? The voice of Abel cried out. When he was killed by his brother, it cried out to God, the Bible says. Which means the blood has a voice. And the blood of Jesus is speaking over your life. No matter how difficult it seems, even if you have come to the to. To, to the last part where you think there is no way out, the blood will make a way, my brother, my sister. The blood of Jesus will make a way, for he is our way maker. And his voice cried out, cries out, interceding for us, day in and day out. Mercy before the throne of God, mercy upon your children, mercy. If you think you are bound by generational curses, when you know the Lord Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, you are set free. If you think you are bound by sickness when you know the Lord Jesus and the power of his blood and resurrection upon your life, you are set free. What a wonderful God we have. His hand upon our lives. He knew that God would grant him his requests. He knew that no matter how difficult it seemed, no matter how impossible the situation was, he knew that God will make a way. The other thing he says in that prayer is, Lord, keep me from evil. Now this was the same thing that Jesus said in Matthew 6.13. In the Lord's prayer, he said, Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The evil one. Second Timothy 3, 16, 17 says, Of course, God's protection, guidance, prison, and deliverance are all provided through the scriptures. So where do you get this deliverance? Where do you get this protection? When you read the word of God. When you read the word of God. When you value the word of God. You see, Jabez's prayer was not just an utterance of his mouth. He knew the scriptures. When he said, oh, that you would bless me, he was identifying with the Abrahamic promises because Abraham was blessed of God and he knew the blessing that Abraham would have. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory. He knew that territories was given by God and God set it before Adam. He knew the word of God. Today, do you know the word of God. If you know the word of God, you can turn every pain into prayer. If you know the word of God, you can turn every trial into an opportunity for God's glory. Knowing the word of God. There was someone else who turned pain into prayer. His name was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He was hung on a cross, on a cruel cross for you and me. The message of Christ is simple. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. And as he was in pain going through the agony of the sins of the world upon his shoulder, he bled. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our transgressions. And by his stripes we are healed. Yet when he went through that pain, when he went through that suffering, when he went through that agony, when he went through all of those trials at the time, his intense passion, he turned his trial into a prayer. Just like Jabez did. 
He turned every sorrow when he said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. He turned every trial into a passion for victory. And today, you have that opportunity. You who are tuned in have that wonderful and glorious opportunity to say to God, oh, that you would bless me. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory. Oh, that your righteous right hand would be upon, or your righteous hand would be upon my life. Oh, that you would keep me from all evil. My brother, my sister, you and I have the victory in Jesus' name. And when we trust him, it, was, it is so profound. Psalm 119, 31 says, I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. Now, when he prayed this prayer, finally, consider the response of God. The, God, the Lord has said, the Lord who has promised us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. God has said that he will hear and respond to the prayers of his people. The Bible says that the Lord answered his prayer and granted him what he requested. His prayer was answered. Today, God is going to give you a breakthrough likewise. If you will agree with me and believe, I'm just a mere man. I have, I have no idea what you're going through. But I know the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and I'm sharing it with you. My brother, my sister, he will turn your sorrow into joy. So just like Jabez, let us make it our heart's cry to turn every trial into a prayer before God. Because when we pray in faith, we will have the victory. There may be some of you watching who do not know the Lord as your personal Savior. Now is your time. This is the day of salvation. If you will agree with me and surrender your life, you will have great victory as we pray. Lord, we thank you this day. We thank you for watching over our lives. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for granting us your peace. We thank you for granting us your grace, Lord. But this day we pray for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who are sorrowful, just like the prayer of Jabez, help us to turn it around. And we thank you that in every infirmity, Lord, we have the victory. We thank you that as we surrender our lives to you and you become Lord of our lives, we make that exchange where we know our sins have been forgiven and we are set free. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my sister, if you have been saved through this message, if you have turned to the Lord, write to us on the email address on your screen. You can even ring us if you like. Till we meet again next, to, next time on New Life in Jesus, we rejoice with you in the knowledge of the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you and keep you.